Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use electricity in Rust. This is going to be a beginner tutorial explaining how it all works and I'm going to go over all the components. This is not an advanced guide by any means. Later, I will show you more intricate circuits. However, this guide is just going to be showing you how the flow of electricity works as well as how all the individual components work. Okay, so to start off, electricity can come from three different power sources. It can come from a solar panel, a generator, or a wind turbine. Then you can feed this into one of three batteries, the small, medium, and large. And finally, that stored electricity can then be output into certain devices such as auto turrets and water pumps for use. If you want to copy electric circuits, you can go online and find many. There's heaps out there. But if you want to make your own intricate circuits, then you're going to need to understand the basics in order to come up with your own unique designs. The first and most crucial point to understand is how the flow of electricity works. If you hold out your wire tool and put it up to the connection point, you can actually see how much electricity is flowing via that wire. So for example, if we hold it up next to the solar panel, we can see that the solar panel is outputting 20 units. And if we go over to our battery, we can see what that 20 units actually represents. If you look at the battery, you can see that it says charge left in minutes, active usage, max output, and capacity. This is different for all three batteries. The charge left will only show when you're actually charging something, so in this case it's null, but it basically shows how many minutes left before the battery dies. The active usage is how many units are being drained from the battery, so right now it's zero. The maximum output is the maximum amount of usage that we're allowed to drain out of our battery. So for a small battery, it's only 10, but a medium battery is 50 and large is 100. The capacity is another way of measuring how much charge you have left. 150 RWM basically means you have 150 minutes worth of power. However, some devices use more than one unit of power per minute. For example, an auto turret uses 10 RWM per minute. Therefore, if you have 150 minutes and you give it all to an auto turret which consumes 10 per minute, you're only going to have 15 minutes, which is 150 divided by 10. However, if you were to select, say, a water pump which only uses 5, then instead of 15 minutes, you'd have 30 minutes because a water pump uses half the amount of electricity. So, keeping this in mind, if you create a circuit which is generating more power than it's using, you'll always have power. Also, keep in mind that solar panels don't generate any power at night and they can fluctuate throughout the day, so it's up to you to keep this in mind. Okay, so now you know the basics of electricity and how flow works. Next, I'm going to show you the individual components that you will be using in order to create basic circuits. It's important to understand the majority of these components as some of them are very crucial. However, I will note if some of them are more advanced and you can stay away from certain components that might seem a little bit too confusing. For the sake of not dragging out this video, I'm going to be leaving out devices as they're pretty self-explanatory. You input power and they serve a function. For example, if you input power into a light, it turns on and provides light. So I'm just going to be talking about the components which actually are used to set up your circuit. Here they all are in my inventory. Let's go through them one by one. The wire tool doesn't need much of an explanation. It just connects things together. Left click to create a connection and you can hold right click to clear a line. The root combiner is very simple. It takes two inputs of power and delivers the combined output. For example, two solar panels, each delivering 20 power, would combine together to give 40 output power, which we can send into our batteries. The blocker acts as a connector piece for electricity. It allows electricity to flow through it. However, if you input a signal to the side of the blocker, it will cancel the original line of electricity. In this example, you can see that the electricity flows through the blocker into the light and the light turns on. But as soon as we input electricity into the side of the blocker, it cancels that original line. Hence, the light turns off. Next up is the RAN switch. Now, this is a bit more of a complicated switch and it's definitely not useful in terms of regular circuits. However, if you want to get a little bit more creative with your designs, you can create things like casinos and other non-practical devices. However, they can be a bit of fun. Like most other switches, the RAN switch has a power in and a power out. However, as you can see here, the light will not turn on because the power is not going through the random switch. So in order for the light to turn on, we need to take another input of power, such as this timer, and put it into the set. Then once we flick the switch and it activates the set, it has a 50% chance to allow the power originally to flow through to the light. However, as you can see here on the first time, we flick the timer and nothing happens. Then on the second time, it works. This is because it has a random chance of turning on and off. You can also put power into the reset to reset it back to no power. Next up is the e-branch, an extremely important component because it allows you to precisely branch out power. 
Rather than using the splitter, which just splits the power into three, the eBranch allows you to precisely output the exact amount of power that you want to output. The default is two. So for example, if I put all my power into this light, and then I branch out the power into the auto turret, the auto turret won't turn on because it's only getting two power. However, if I click E on the E branch, I can change this to 10, which is the minimum an auto turret needs, and now you'll see the auto turret turns on. This is something that's extremely important and you need to pay close attention to, because if you set the power to 20, the auto turret would still consume 20 units of power, hence it would be wasting 10. However, if you set it to less than 10, it wouldn't turn on. So you need to make sure that using E branches, your power output is precise, because too high or too low, and your circuit will either not work or be inefficient. Next up is the memory cell, which is a little bit more advanced. If you're setting up simple circuits, you don't need to worry about this one. However, for those looking to make a more advanced circuit, it can be quite helpful. The memory cell works like the others, where you input power and you output power. However, this one has two power outputs, an inverted and a regular. You can set these two different power lines into two different devices, such as I've done here with two different lights. And then you can switch between the two, as I'll show you now. The left power is the inverted one, and the right one is the regular output. Initially, the power will run through into the inverted output, hence the left light is on. However, if we take some electricity and we put it into the set, which is on the side of the memory cell, we can switch the light source so that the electricity now runs through the output instead of the inverted output. And same goes for if we had another switch which went into the reset, it would go the other way. So rather than going into the output, it would go into the inverted output. It's important to note that if I set the output to regular output, and then I try and set the output again to regular output, nothing happens because it's trying to go the same direction. That's why you need two different switches so that you can switch between the two. Or you could set up a switch which runs into the toggle, which is the final of the three on the side panel of the memory cell. The toggle acts in both directions, meaning that whichever direction the output power is currently going, if you input some power into the toggle, it'll just switch. So as you can see here, I can keep activating the toggle and it'll switch between the two lights. Combining all three of these functions allows for some very interesting designs. The timer is very simple, it allows electricity to pass through for a given amount of time. If you hold E on the timer, you can set the duration, which is set in seconds, with a default of 10. Once you've set your timer, if you flick the switch for that amount of seconds, electricity will pass through the circuit. Rather than manually flicking the switch, you can have electricity run into the side of the timer, which acts as a toggle. This will toggle the timer to turn on. Next up, the switch, which is very simple. It just acts as a pass-through for power, and you can turn this on and off to stop power coming in. Unlike the timer, when you flick a switch, it's permanent and will stay on forever. And again, like the timer, it has side panels so that you can switch the switch on and off by inputting electricity into the two side panels, like shown here. Next up are the conditional switches. These are all very similar, so I'm going to group them together. There's the OR switch, the XOR switch, and the AND switch. All have a very similar function, but are slightly different, which means they all serve a unique purpose. They all accept two inputs of power, input A and input B, and they'll only output power when the condition is met. Firstly, for the AND switch, it will only transmit power when both input A and input B have power. If either one of them is missing power, then it will not turn on. Next up, the OR switch will transmit power if at least one of the inputs has power. So if input A or input B give power, then it will transmit the power. And if input A and input B have power, then it will still transmit the power. Next up, the XOR switch will only transmit power when only one, either input A or input B is receiving power. If both are receiving power, then it will shut down. The counter is very simple, but really useful in my opinion. If you give it some power, it'll start off at zero. And then if you input power into the side of the panel, you can increment its counter. You can also decrease the counter or reset it back to zero. Another use for it is that you can hold E and allow it to show the pass through. This shows how much electricity is running through your circuit, which can be useful. The splitter splits power into a maximum of three outputs. It's essentially the same as an E branch, except it's quite inefficient because it divides the power evenly, so it's not as precise as the E branch. The door controller can be paired to an unlocked door. Then once it's paired, you can connect it up to a circuit and then use switches to open and close your doors. This is very helpful for heli garages and other things like that. A laser detector allows power to flow through it when someone is standing in front of the laser. This is very useful for trap bases. 
The HBHF sensor works the same way, however its radius is much larger and in a giant cone shape. And the HBHF sensor can be changed to include authorized players or non-authorized players. This means that you can use it for a trap or you can use it for an automatic door which only allows those with tool cupboard access to open. The pressure pad allows power to pass through when someone steps on it, therefore it's very similar to the laser trap except in a different fashion. The RF pager can be set to one of 10,000 frequencies, and if a signal is played on its specific frequency, it will start to beep. This item can either be in your inventory or in a close box nearby and you'll be able to hear it. If you use these frequencies, the pager will go off when the heavies get called in an oil rig or when the excavator starts up. The RF receiver does essentially the same thing, however it allows electricity to pass through it and it's stationary. You can set this up to lights or sound alarms if you want your oil rig alarm to be a little bit more dramatic. The RF broadcaster is essentially the opposite of the RF receiver. Rather than receiving a signal, it creates one at any given frequency which you choose. You can use this to create alarms which scare off raiders or alarms that notify you whilst you're out and about by sending a signal to your RF pager. Finally, the last two items are the smart items which are items which are actually paired to your cell phone. So if you download the Rust app, you can connect to your server which you are using and then using your app, you can either set your switch to on and off or you can receive notifications when something is triggered via the smart alarm. For example, if you had a pressure plate in your base and you connected it up to a smart alarm, you could pair that to your cell phone so that whenever anyone runs over your pressure pad, you get a notification on your phone. These are all the components that I wanted to talk about. Obviously there's other things like water pumps and auto turrets, but because their function is very simple, you can figure that out for yourself. Now it goes on to actually creating circuits. So the best advice I can give you is thoroughly understand everything I've said in this video and then practice making some simple circuits on your own. Copy designs from YouTube and then understand how they work so that you can use them in your own designs. I will make another video later going over some very simple designs and then you can work off of that. But for now, that concludes my video on the basic guide for the components that we'll later use in our circuit. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not already a member of the Discord, be sure to join now. I recently did a giveaway because we hit 200 members and I'm sure to do another one when we hit 2K subscribers. So make sure you're in the Discord to get notified when I do my next giveaway. Congratulations to Howen for winning the last giveaway, which was the Royal Garage Door skin. I'm not sure what I want to give away next, but let me know in the comments below what you might like to see. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.